Hey everyone, this is Matt Prez with Converge, and welcome to yet another video on making hole patterns. So at this point, we've covered creating hole patterns through quite a bit, right? So we've done six different videos to this point, different aspects of setting up these files and ultimately just creating a hole pattern on a plate. We talked about global variables and how to link those and link dimensions, making reference sketches, driving the patterns with equations, driving the patterns with if else statements, adding some intelligence in there. We talked about library features. So if you do the same pattern over and over and over and over again, uh, with, you know, with some simple changes in dimensions, we talked about how to set up a file so we can drag and drop that feature on. And in the last video, we talked about configurations. So various ways that we can essentially create the same part and add configurations and configure features pretty quickly. So now we wanna take it one step further and talk about design tables. Now design tables are integrating Excel directly into SolidWorks to help us drive these configurations. And what we're going to see is that everything that we've defined so far, the configuration names, the features themselves, whether they're the dimensions of the plate, the dimensions of the holes, the number of instances in the pattern, all this stuff is going to be very easy to populate in a table in Excel. So as I talked about very briefly in the last video, uh, if you guys have any advanced Excel knowledge, so setting up custom macros inside of Excel to drive functionality, whether it's, you know, having various input boxes or drop down lists or anything like that, that can really help you speed up the design here. All right. So there are some other things that we will try to talk about in this series. I don't want to make it go on for forever, but I do want to make sure that I cover all the aspects of, of what we're doing here. So I think after this video, we're probably going to cover DriveWorks Express uh, because that is something that's built into SolidWorks for uh, you know pretty much everybody. So uh, we will talk about that a little bit because that is going to be along the same lines of making you know uh, a file that is customizable, right? So we're going to talk about that a little bit and maybe even possibly get into some API programming. Uh, that's getting outside of the realm of just doing normal features and sketches and configurations. So uh, I'm not 100% sure that we're going to cover that or not. Maybe if that's something that you guys want to see and we get a lot of interest in it, we'll, we'll go ahead and do a video on that as well. But for right now, make sure that you're starting with the configurations file that we created from the last video. Uh, if you didn't follow along and you're just starting out here, that's fine. I, I highly recommend that you at least check out some of the other videos so that you can follow along with what we've covered so far. But we will provide this file and it is in SOLIDWORKS 2018. So if you're not using 2018 or 2019, it's really best that you at least go back to the sixth video in the series on configurations and follow along with that one so you're, you know, you're at least at the same point. So what we want to do from here in our configurations manager is we're going to go to configurations and when we right click on here, we can uh, add configurations, we can use this configuration publisher, rebuild, save marks, or, you know, all this different stuff. There's nothing in here that says design table, all right? So, but if we go into insert and we go into tables, we have this thing called a design table and you'll notice that it has the Excel logo over it. When we click on this, we have the option to create a blank one, to auto create or select one from file. So if you have a custom template that you wanna use uh, and you've done this stuff before, you're probably not watching this video, honestly. So uh, if design tables are new to you, you wanna use the auto create option, which is what we're gonna do here. The edit control, we have allow model edits to update the design table. And what this means is if we make any changes to a configuration, for example, the size of our plate. In the default configuration, if we change the size of the plate to 15 inches or 20 inches or whatever, what we're saying here is we want this to be able to update the Excel file. There's also an option to block those model edits. And what that means is you can only make changes to those sketches, those features, those dimensions through the Excel design table. All right. So there are different reasons why you might want to do one over the other. We're going to leave the allow model edits to update. And this means that if we add another configuration manually or we make changes to a dimension or whatever, it'll update the Excel file. If you have a design that for whatever reason you want complete control over it through that Excel file, then you might want to block those edits. Down in the options section, there are a bunch of other things in here. Uh, add new rows and columns in the design for new parameters, configurations, warn when updates are going to change. And that means that if you have this allow model updates on, that's what it's talking about. 
and enable cell dropdown lists. So again, if you have any advanced Excel knowledge, uh, setting up dropdown lists, setting up custom macros or whatever, this is the option here that will allow you to see some of that functionality, those dropdown lists. So, uh, you know, just a good example here, we're not going to get too deep into Excel functionality because this is obviously it's for SolidWorks. We're not going to, you know, have a whole intense course on, on how to program in Excel. But uh, really what this means is if you create a dropdown list for different hole sizes that you want to use. So for example, if you only want people to be able to select a quarter inch, a half inch, three quarter inch hole, you could have a drop down list and allow them to select those to populate a configuration. So from here, we're going to click OK. What it'll do is it opens Excel and you'll notice that it populated it for us. And this is still directly in SolidWorks. However, you'll notice at the top, it looks just like Excel, right? And, and it's got most of the functionality in there. You'll also notice in the configuration manager, we now have a folder that says tables. To get started, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, even though we don't have a lot of cells, but I want to make sure that we understand what's going on here. So in here on the left hand side, the format of this is critical. SolidWorks has to have very specific things in, in each of these rows and columns and cells in order for this to work. Now, if you follow, if you just auto create this from SolidWorks, it's perfectly fine and you're good to go. However, if you try to manually create one of these, you need to follow the same formula. The first cell, A1, needs to say design table four and the file name. Then uh, A2 is gonna be empty, A3, these will be the configuration names from here. And uh, the second one here, these are the descriptions of the configurations. This one is the color. And then we start to see our features pop up here, all right? So we don't actually need the color. We don't actually need the description. These are things that are just auto-populated and uh, we can really just, we could delete them if we wanted to. I'm gonna leave them in here for now though. So what we wanna talk about here is the way that we would add new configurations. So inside of A7, I'm gonna say long pattern, small hole. I know these are really long, obscure um, configuration names, but it just makes sense for us. I'm gonna leave the description and color empty. And what that means is it'll pull those from somewhere else. And then uh, for the hole diameter, so small hole, we're going to do 0.25, long pattern. All right, so that's the number of instances. I'm just going to leave as 10. And then as soon as I click in the SOLIDWORKS window, it's thinking it is creating that new table. And then it prompts us. It says, hey, we created a new configuration for you. And you'll notice that we see it over here in the left-hand side. So now we see an Excel icon to the left. And what this tells us is we've got the default, which is the one we originally started with, long pattern, long pattern, small hole. This is the one that we created in Excel. Short pattern, small hole, all right? So I know the names aren't very good, but this is just to give you guys an idea of how to work through this. So now if we wanna make any changes, we have a design table here that we can right click. Edit feature will allow you to edit some of those parameters of the design table, like blocking edits, things like that. Edit table will pop it up directly in the SOLIDWORKS window like we did before, and it's telling us it's updating. Then it asks us if we want to add some more stuff that it found in the file. For example, parameters, part number. If you have a custom property that you set up, then uh, you know certain li things like that can be included. You will notice the nomenclature. It has the dollar sign, and then it says part number in all caps. I'm going to say cancel. I don't want to add it to my table, but we can just click on the SOLIDWORKS screen to get out of that. If we right click and say edit table in new window, it's actually gonna open this up directly in Excel. And again, it's, it's prompting us, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say cancel, I don't wanna add any of that stuff. And now we have full Excel functionality. We had most of this stuff before when it's open in SOLIDWORKS, but you can have access to your developer tab. Um, you can start to create custom macros that run in the background and do kind of, you know certain things. I do want to caution against getting too creative inside of here because uh, really all you need is to be able to populate these cells with values. But you can have hidden you can have hidden information and you can have some sort of dialog box that you know gives you a drop down to be able to select the certain values and so on. Now, all that stuff can happen in here, but if it's a simple part, just be careful adding too much because it's just going to add more complexity to the file, and the more complex it gets, the more things can break. So at this point, we're directly inside of Excel. 
uh, we can just call this new pattern. And in here, uh, I'm going to keep the same quarter inch hole. And maybe I'll just put uh, two instances. And then I'm just going to close this. All right. When I close it, it's going to automatically save. It created a new configuration for me. And now I have this one called new pattern. The line here means that it has not been rebuilt. So if I double click on it, it'll generate it, it'll rebuild it, and we're good to go. So what happens if we add a new configuration in here? Um, we're going to call this one new config test. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And if we want to do anything special in here, like let's say that we want to add an extrude cut on this face. And I'll just go ahead and I'll just add something in here. It doesn't have to be you know very specific. We can add dimensions if we want to. Go ahead and add a dimension from here of half inch. And I'll drive the shape of it just because um, I can't leave well enough alone. I got to add these dimensions. We'll go ahead and just drive it a little bit and add a dimension to the edge here. Five inches. And then we'll do an extrude cut through all. So now I've added this new feature. This new feature is only in this configuration. Uh, just by the properties that are automatically in configurations by default, that will be suppressed in all other configurations. We can right click and we can configure it and we can decide, well, we don't want it to be suppressed in all of them. We wanted to suppress it in only some of them. That means that some of these configurations will have that hole in it and some won't, right? So it'll be here in some and, and here in others. However, you'll notice that the icon next to the one we created is different. It's not in Excel. But if we right click and we edit the Excel design table, it's going to say, hey, some new stuff has happened. There's a new configuration we need to add. There is a new suppression state that we need to consider for a sketch and for a feature. And if I want to add that stuff, I say, OK. It'll populate. It'll update the Excel design table. And now we're going to see a new column here. Now we have the column for suppression state, which is basically an S. You'll notice here that when we click on it, it tells us an S is suppressed, U is unsuppressed, 1 is suppressed, or 0 is unsuppressed. And it gives us a drop down for each of these options. So if we want to say that it's unsuppressed, we want to decide to suppress it in this one here, we can add all those parameters. All right. So now, again, I'm going to drag this out a little bit, make it a bit bigger so we can see it. It's actually hidden behind here, which is um, it does happen from time to time. Because I've resized this, it, uh, it automatically places it at a certain point in time. So uh, if you ever decide to resize the feature manager, uh, just be aware that you're probably hiding some stuff behind it. So you can see now all of our configurations are here. We've got some parameters in here, a hole, diameter, uh, suppression state. Click on it, it'll update them. Any of them that have not been updated will have that little dashed line uh, next to it. But we can come in here and you can see that the features show up in some of them and, and they're suppressed in others and it's all controlled directly from that Excel design table. So again, this is just really a basic overview. I wanted to talk a little bit about different ways that we can configure these patterns, right? We want to talk about how we can increase the whole size, how we can change the amount of the pattern. And we've done it with if else statements. We've done it with just uh, simple equations in the equation manager by driving the pattern itself based on the size of the plate. We've looked at library features. And now we have another option for uh, configurations, for design tables, and actually controlling a bunch of different versions of the same part by adding you know, different rows, different values into an Excel template, or manually doing it with configurations and just coming in and configuring a feature. So for example, if I go to this box extrude and I want to change the box thickness, and in some of them, let's say that I make it two inches in this one, all right? Or if I expand this and I come to this box base sketch and I start to configure this, if at any point in time I decide to make one of these boxes, let's say that this one is going to be 20 inches long, all right? Those are now going to be considered in that design table. So if I edit it in a new window, it's going to think about it. It's going to say, you know, hey, you made some changes. You added some stuff that we didn't know about before. Do you want us to include it in the design table? So you can say, yeah, sure. We'll go ahead and we'll add the box width and we'll add the box thickness, and we can control that again directly in this design table. If we decide that we want this new pattern to be 20 long, we just modify it, say okay, or, or you know, X out of that. And now we have 
a 20 inch long version here that's two inches thick. We've got various other ones that have certain features suppressed or unsuppressed. And there's a lot of functionality that can be built into this directly in those configurations and those Excel design tables. So just like with all the other stuff, if you guys have any questions on this, I know it was uh, sort of an abbreviated overview of configurations. There's a lot more functionality here than we talked about, but in realm of our simple example of whole patterns on this plate, I wanted to make sure that we covered this uh, as an you know, applicable option. The configurations, especially design tables, are very useful in a lot of cases when we're talking about replicating geometry like this. Any questions, please reach out to us, let us know. Um, and again, we will be talking about this topic a little bit more. I don't know how much deeper we're going to go with it because we've covered a lot so far. But if you guys are enjoying this and you're getting some use out of it, please let us know. If you think that we're just, you know, going too deep down this rabbit hole of making this simple part, then let us know as well. We want to make sure that this content is useful for you guys and something that you can apply to your designs. So thanks for watching and hopefully we'll see you guys in the next one.